The International Space Station is approaching the end of its operational life, prompting various organizations to compete for the opportunity to succeed it. Among the contenders, four space stations emerge as the most promising candidates to take its place. Let's discover who they are in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The four candidates chosen to discuss today are based on two criteria their potential to succeed the ISS, and their capacity to revolutionize space exploration. Let's start with the first contender, SpaceX. For those unaware, SpaceX is not only dominating space launches and planning missions to the Moon and Mars, but it's also working on building its own space station. Surprisingly, this space station will be constructed using starships. Yes, the same spacecraft designed for interplanetary missions. At first glance, using Starship as a space station might sound unconventional, but it's actually a well-suited choice. Starship was originally designed to carry hundreds of passengers on extended journeys to Mars, meaning it already includes advanced life support systems that meet the requirements of a space station. One of Starship's standout features is its construction material, stainless steel. Unlike other materials commonly used in spacecraft, stainless steel is highly durable, resistant to corrosion, and capable of withstanding the harsh conditions of space, including extreme temperatures and micrometeorite impacts. This makes it ideal for long-term use in orbit. Additionally, stainless steel is relatively easy to maintain and repair compared to more complex materials, further increasing its suitability as a space station building block. So how would SpaceX turn Starship into a space station? The concept involves reviving a long-forgotten but visionary design, a rotating wheel space station. Instead of a single starship, SpaceX plans to link multiple starships in a circular formation that rotates about its axis. This rotation would create artificial gravity, addressing one of the key challenges of a long-term space habitation, microgravity. Unlike the ISS, which operates in a microgravity environment, a rotating station could simulate Earth-like gravity, mitigating health issues like muscle atrophy and bone density loss that astronauts experience in weightless conditions. Imagine a giant parking lot in outer space where each car is a starship. The modular nature of this design offers unparalleled flexibility. If any Starship module requires maintenance or upgrades, it can simply undock, return to Earth for refurbishment, and rejoin the station later. This design not only ensures efficiency, but also leverages Starship's reusability, a hallmark of SpaceX's cost-cutting approach. Moreover, building a space station using Starships could significantly reduce the cost of orbital infrastructure. SpaceX's rapidly decreasing launch costs and Starship's massive capacity to host hundreds of passengers open up possibilities for a wide range of uses, from scientific research to commercial ventures and even space tourism. The prospect of affordable access to space could transform it from an exclusive domain of astronauts to an opportunity available to ordinary people. Imagine booking a trip to a Starship space station, staying in one module, and using another as a transportation vehicle. Of course, technical challenges remain and questions about feasibility persist. However, SpaceX has consistently pushed the boundaries of what's possible in aerospace. The Starship space station represents a bold and groundbreaking idea, blending ingenuity with practicality. Its potential to transform space exploration and redefine human presence in orbit makes it one of the most compelling concepts in the race to succeed the ISS. Now, when discussing space stations in the context of SpaceX, it is essential to bring up Blue Origin's Orbital Reef. While not exclusively Blue Origin's space station, Orbital Reef is a collaborative project developed in partnership with Blue Origin, Sierra Space, and several other companies. This space station, unlike SpaceX's theoretical and futuristic designs, is grounded in the capabilities of current technologies, making it a more immediate and practical venture. One of the Orbital Reef's major strengths is its modular design, which allows for maximum customization and compatibility. It is designed to be capable of docking with a wide range of operational spacecraft, including SpaceX's Dragon 2, Soyuz, Dream Chaser, and Boeing's Starliner. This flexibility ensures a broad range of commercial and governmental customers. Among its various modules, Orbital Reef includes inflatable modules that will help reduce launch mass and simplify construction. 
These inflatable modules also make it possible to create large volume modules that would be difficult or impossible to achieve with traditional rigid structures. Sierra Space is responsible for the development of these modules, and the company has already conducted safety tests on them, which is a promising sign of progress. Orbital Reef is envisioned as a commercial space station designed to support a variety of space-related activities. Its primary goals are to provide infrastructure for research, technology demonstrations, and serve as a destination for commercial customers. This includes enabling private industries to conduct manufacturing, research, and development development and to participate in space tourism. Unlike the International Space Station, which is primarily focused on scientific research, Orbital Reef is expected to be a more comfortable and versatile environment. With larger modules and large windows offering views of Earth, the station will provide a more enjoyable space experience. Additionally, it'll have quarters designed for both personal and business use, creating a more comfortable living and working environment for its occupants. For transportation to and from Orbital Reef, Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket will be responsible for delivering the station's modules, while Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will be tasked with ferrying crew members. Although Boeing's Starliner is also part of the plan, its recent performance issues may limit its involvement in the near term. Despite these challenges, the potential of Orbital Reef remains significant, though progress has been slower than anticipated. Most of the development milestones so far have come from Sierra Space, including the inflatable module and the Dream Chaser prototype. In addition to Orbital Reef, another exciting space station project is Starlab, a low-Earth orbit commercial space station under development by a joint venture between Voyager Space, Airbus, and several other partner companies. The Starlab project aims to provide a versatile and advanced space station for research and development with an emphasis on accommodating astronauts and researchers in an environment that encourages innovation and discovery. Starlab's design includes two primary modules. The service module, responsible for propulsion and energy generation via solar panels, and the habitat and laboratory module, which provides living space and serves as a research facility. The Habitat module also includes docking ports for spacecraft, ensuring that Starlab can maintain regular contact with Earth and other spacecraft. One of the most notable aspects of Starlab's design is its larger module diameter. Each of Starlab's modules has a diameter of 8 meters, significantly larger than the ISS's 4 meter diameter modules. Starlab's pressurized volume is 450 cubic meters, which is smaller than the ISS's 900 cubic meters, but still offers ample space for astronauts. The increased diameter and innovative design could provide a more spacious and comfortable environment, enhancing the astronauts' ability to conduct research and live in space for extended periods. As a joint venture, Starlab benefits from the combined expertise of several renowned companies. Voyager Space and Airbus bring decades of aerospace experience, while MDA Space, a leader in space robotics, will provide Starlab with advanced external robotics systems. This includes the scalable and modular MDA SkyMaker system, which will enhance the station's capabilities. Additionally, Palantir, a leader in artificial intelligence and machine learning, will integrate AI systems into Starlab, enabling real-time data processing and supporting mission-critical decision-making. Hilton, the American hospitality company, is also involved in Starlab, providing expertise in astronaut comfort and well-being. This partnership ensures that the space station will have the necessary facilities and equipment to maintain astronauts' comfort and health during long-duration missions. In October of 2023, Northrop Grumman announced it would join the Starlab project and discontinue its own space station initiative. The company will contribute an autonomous docking system for its Cygnus spacecraft, which will be responsible for resupplying Starlab. While SpaceX is not directly involved in the development of Starlab, it plays a crucial role in the project. SpaceX's Starship will be the primary means of transporting Starlab into low Earth orbit. Thanks to Starship's massive cargo bay, which is 9 meters in diameter, Starlab's two 8-meter diameter modules will fit perfectly. This will allow for the entire station to be launched in a single mission, reducing transportation costs and accelerating the station's timeline. However, due to the complexities involved with Starship's development, the launch of Starlab is not expected to occur before 2028.
Star Lab's mission will focus on weightlessness research, particularly for the pharmaceutical industry. It'll be open to astronauts from both the United States and Europe, providing a unique research platform for a variety of scientific disciplines. However, one limitation of Star Lab is that, unlike Orbital Reef, it will not cater to space tourism. Instead, it will remain focused on scientific research and industrial development. In conclusion, both Orbital Reef and Star Lab are ambitious projects that aim to transform the future of space exploration and utilization. Orbital Reef's modular design and emphasis on commercial activities position it as a versatile and accessible platform for a wide range of industries, including space tourism, research, and manufacturing. Meanwhile, Star Lab's larger modules and advanced technology integrations make it a promising research platform for weightlessness studies and pharmaceutical development. While both projects have different focuses and timelines, they represent the future of commercial space stations, offering new opportunities for private industry and space exploration. Last but not least, we have the Paradise in the Sky, the Haven Space Station by VAST. Founded in 2021, VAST is a privately held aerospace company headquartered in Long Beach, California. While young, VAST is certainly not an underdog in the space industry. As part of the second collaborations for commercial space capabilities, VAST has already developed two ambitious projects, Haven 1 and 2. Haven 1 is a commercial space station module designed to provide a habitat for research, manufacturing, and tourism in low Earth orbit. The Haven 1 module will initially operate as an independent crewed space station. However, the long-term goal is to eventually link Haven 1 to a larger space station, Haven 2, which VAST is currently working on. At the 75th International Astronautical Congress, VAST unveiled Haven 2, its proposed successor to the ISS. Haven 2 will serve as a critical step toward VAST's vision for long-term human presence in space. The first module of Haven 2 is planned to be fully operational in orbit by 2028. This module will be significantly larger than Haven 1, offering almost double the habitable space, while maintaining the same high standards for reliability and functionality. Once the first Haven 2 module is deployed, VAST plans to launch and deploy three more modules over the next two years. These modules will follow an efficient and cost-effective design, expanding the space station's usable volume, improving the available facilities, and ensuring that vital life support systems and consumables are available for astronauts aboard. By the early 2030s, VAST envisions introducing a larger 7-meter diameter core module, along with four additional Haven 2 modules, completing a next-generation commercial space station capable of serving NASA, international partners, commercial researchers, manufacturers, and private astronauts. The fully completed Haven 2 space station will be equipped with an impressive 3.8 meter diameter cupola window offering breathtaking views of space. Additionally, the station will have external payload hosting capabilities, enabling the attachment of scientific and commercial equipment. To perform tasks like maintenance and cargo handling, a robotic arm will be included. The station will also support visiting vehicle berthing, enabling spacecraft to dock for crew transfer and resupply missions. To support extravehicular activities, Haven 2 will feature a dedicated EVA airlock, ensuring astronauts can safely exit the station for spacewalks or other operations. These advanced features will cater to the diverse needs of commercial customers, researchers, and private astronauts. One of the most significant advantages of the Haven 2 station is its partnership with SpaceX. This collaboration will help ensure that Haven 1, the first module, will be the earliest candidate to enter operation in 2025. Additionally, the station will be connected to SpaceX's Starlink network, providing astronauts with reliable communication and entertainment options while in orbit. VAST's design is expected to outpace all other proposed on-orbit space stations in terms of volume, functionality, and operational efficiency. The combination of innovative design, strategic partnerships, and a focus on meeting the needs of both commercial and governmental space operations makes the Haven Space Station a strong contender to replace the ISS in the future. And that's it folks, the four space stations that I believe will eventually replace the ISS. Let me know your top four, or which station you think has the most potential to be the successor to the ISS in the comments down below.
And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date in all things aerospace related, especially when it comes to SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.